Okay, hello again folks, it's DJ's time to shine and we have four more characters left after this. Yun, C Viper, Dan and someone else. T-Hawk, uh, there we go, he's the next one I'm doing actually after DJ. So, first off, let's show the delayed wake up as per usual. So, you can sweep me and you, if you hold heavy punch when you get knocked down, You'll stay on the ground for 11 more frames, which might be enough to stop them hitting you. And we have the red focus attack, so looks like that for DJ. Pretty simple. Same rules apply, level 1. Doesn't crumple, maximum level does. Comes out the same speed as well. Costs 2 meter bars and can absorb 32 hits. FAD seen into it, costs all your meter bars. Absorbs 0 hits, but can crumple on level 1. On hit, so... Heavy punches usually work, and you can use normal focus attack plus heavy punch or heavy kick to get it to come out now. Okay, so you've got an option of two buttons there. Okay, so DJ's got quite a lot of changes, but most of them are little small frame tweaks, so we'll go through them quite quickly probably. Fast standing medium punch start up is now six frame instead of seven. Okay, so one frame there. The second thing is fast standing heavy punch, that one. It's late active frames, now float air units on counter hit. Okay, so, I was a bit unsure what float means, it's used somewhere else as well, but I understood it to be basically a launch, because if you hit them with a counter hit when they're grounded, you get a launch effect. So basically, they wanted me to transfer that onto jumping opponents on the late active frames, so like that. Okay, and I equalized the launch height to that to match the ground one. It might be a bit too high. But if you hit them with the early ones, then um, you still get the launch, really. But now you get the launch. On the late active frames, if they're jumping. On counter hit only, though. Okay, which means you can do something nice. You know, you can do a standing heavy kick and that'll hit them. Which you probably already knew because... It was always available. So the next thing is stop jumping for me. We have crouching light kick. It's now four frames start up instead of five. So you know it is what it is. Four frames, not too bad. Crouching medium punch. Hitbox expanded forward. So I've expanded it by 0.1. So hits about that range now, which is a bit more reasonable. Okay. Yep, about that range. Crouching medium kick, 80 damage now, instead of 70. Okay, hold on, we've got counter hit on. 80 damage. So that's nice, because that's kind of bread and butter involved anyway. Crouching heavy punch, hitbox is also expanded forward 0.1, so hits about his elbow now, properly. Okay, which is always good. The knee shot, ah, this is quite, some of that seemed pretty damn good unless I got it wrong his knee shot so that'd be that is hit stun so on hit plus an extra three frames so to me it seems really easy to combo out of now you know I'm an amateur but I'm not timing it at all I'm hitting him quite far on the head and I'm combo out of it really easily now providing I haven't made a mistake um, that seems really good now air slasher the chip damage on that has been increased to 15. Let's quickly sit the, the thing on before it hits. There we go. 15 on all of them now. So this one should do 30. No, obviously it's just going to... It doesn't combo. So 15 each, yes. Right, we've got light double rolling subot. Subot. Subat. So that, even though it's not a double, light double rolling subat. Minus 3 on block. So instead of minus five, so you gain two advantage. Minus three is still kind of punishable by most things, but it's still better than it was. The medium kick double rolling subat. The first hitbox is hit stun has been increased by one. So generally this doesn't mean anything. Um, hold on. It doesn't mean anything in that term, but it, it's used so it gives you plus seven on an FADC. So you should be plus seven. I don't know what that means. Whether you can get into stuff. I imagine it does. Otherwise it's pretty useless. Oh wow it's not actually. There we go. We can get into that. I don't know if you could before. 
But plus seven on block that should be now if you do it as fast as possible. So his next change has had quite a few changes really. His EX machine gun uppo is the culprit here. So first off, minus eight on block now rather than minus five. So you're worse off by three frames. That's without mashing. And if you do mash, then you're minus 12 rather than minus nine. Okay, so you've lost or you're worse off minus three frames there as well. But now, as a positive note, it can be FADC'd with or without mashing. So I had two options. Basically, allowing it to be FADC'd as soon as it hits the same sort of timing that your super is, so basically the first hit. But since it said with or without mashings, indicating that if you do mash, you can still FADC it, that would be weird to put it at the very beginning of the first one and then in the middle when you've started to mash. So basically, at the minute, I've put it so you can FADC at any time you want, which is actually really very useful, so you can get some nice chip damage going. And if you do manage to hit, then you can FADC at the end, but it's probably not worth it. You can probably get into whatever you can get into, even without um, without FADC in it. So really, it's just there to make it safe, and you can get some nice chip damage in. See how much it does. Before you, oh, okay. It's making block. See how much chip damage it does before you have to sort of back off. Okay, so nice, a nice, you know, risible chunk there. And that's not all. Right, the first hitbox has been expanded forward slightly. So first hitbox has been expanded by plus 0.05, which is pretty hard to show really. First hitbox, so the very first hit, which is probably not very useful to be honest. And it floats higher is the last thing. Again, I mentioned some earlier about not sure what floating means, but I took it as launches a little bit higher. So it launches quite high, you can probably do something afterwards. Um, well, definitely in the corner, but I think you could do that anyway. So you can't seem to do a standing heavy kick in time because you haven't got enough time to get over there. That, well, that would hit, but it doesn't seem to reach. Right, and lastly, we have Ultra 1, forward movement increased. So, it was 0.3, but I've changed it to 0.45. So, plus 0.15, and it goes like so. So it goes quite a distance, must be about a screen and a half there or something. Um, first hit takes about half a screen, and then you get reasonable three quarters of a screen for all the rest. And that's it, really. So, hopefully that, I don't know if that's Fireball Invincible, if it is, you're more likely to punish Fireballs with your Ultra 1. If not, then probably not. That's all of DJ's changes, so quite a lot of changes there, some really good ones. I really like that, just to make it a lot easier. I wish Goken's Dive Kick was that, that good. And um, generally, mostly buffs I would say, apart from Machine Gun Upper on block, that's, that's bad, but you got the ability to FADC it, so kind of makes it, could it make it like a a wake up sure you can could be because then three bars and you'll FADC it and get some nice chipping as well thanks for watching and I'll see you next time T-Hawk is next I don't think he's gonna have a gun <laughs> so when you want to install my mod you need to download the mod in the download link in the video and then extract the file you'll have your character name changes so a nice readme to let you know what I've changed and how I changed it and installation instructions if you don't want to listen to me. And you'll have a character name.bac and character name.bcm. So the next thing you need to do is find your Capcom directory because your Super Street Fighter 4 files will be in there. Mine's in the C drive in program files, but if you bought it on Steam, it'll probably be in your Steam directory somewhere. So you go in to Super Street Fighter 4. Now you've got some patch 1.07 and patch 1.06. You need to find the one with your most up-to-date character. For example, if we were doing Sagat, his most up-to-date one would be in 1.07, as long as as well as Ryu, Yuri, Dudley, DJ, and Cody. But most characters are in 1.06. The character I'm doing is in there, and most characters are. I'll mention it if it's in 1.07. So you go in, and then you go into Battle, Regulation, Latest AE, and then you find the character we're doing. I'm doing Bison, which has got the, the name Vega at the moment. 
and so you'll have the character name.bac, character name.bcm. And all you need to do is I recommend making a backup and sticking copying those files in and rename them original just so you've got them as backup. And then you just copy over my ones into there, and that'll allow you to play as my modded version in arcade mode, training mode, and versus mode. So you can have some fun. If you've got local friends to play with, you could update two characters that I do and then fight against each other with the new changes. That would be quite interesting. Anyway, so thanks for watching and I hope that has helped.